Welcome, and thank you for standing by. Participants over the phone lines are in a listen-only mode until any of the question and answer sessions of today's conference. And at those times, you may press star 1 on your touchtone phone to ask a question. Today's conference is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect. And I'd like to turn the conference over to your host, Ms. Heidi Crawford. Thank you, ma'am. You may begin. Thank you very much, Fran. And welcome, and thank you for joining us today for our hidden gems and how to find them on census.gov. My name is Heidi Crawford, and along with my partner today, David Craker, we are data dissemination specialists with the Census Bureau. David and I are just a few of the data dissemination specialists across the country available to conduct training, presentations, or we respond to data inquiries from data users and also work with other stakeholders. I'm responsible for all activities in Alaska, Oregon, and Washington, and David services New York State and Northern New Jersey. We will provide you with our contact information at the end of today, as well as our general email and phone number if you'd like to find out who your local DDS is. So today's session focuses on some of our less explored tools and resources on our website. And David and I will take you on a tour of the website and show you how to find these different gems. The webinar will last about an hour, including time for questions. And then we'll also have a Q&A session during and after the webinar. But we're going to have a chat box that'll be open. And then David and I will try and do our best to address questions through the chat during the session. Uh, we can also stay on for a few minutes after the end of the session to address any questions through the chat. So first we'll start off today. Um, most of today will be based on going through our website. Like I said, David and I will take you through a tour and we'll show you um, some of the things that we think are, are neat that are out there that people um, might not know about as much. And then we'll wrap up, we'll just have a few slides at the end to show you a few last things and then we'll provide our contact information and again, we'll be able to do that question and answer, more question and answer at the end. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and transition to go ahead and get on our census website. So I am at our census.gov website. And when you log in sometimes and go to census.gov, you may see initially when you get in this pop-up box, and this is an opportunity for you to go ahead and subscribe if you are interested. I know we all get a lot of emails um, and we can get a lot of, of clutter in our inboxes, but if you are interested in staying on top of what is going with the Bureau, this is a nice way to do it. It's very similar to probably, you know, things that if you've joined, you know, to follow your favorite store um, or get announcements from other news media outlets. You can, once you sign up, you can control what you are interested in receiving information. So if you only want information on 2020, you can get that, our data, et cetera. So I always like to point that out. I'm gonna start off with a little bit of a tour of our census homepage. Now, I know probably just like you all, that a lot of times when you're looking for something, you go to the website and you immediately go to where you know that data might be or you want to search to find it. And so sometimes when you do that, you may miss some of the other neat things that a website might have. So for us, we're going to start off with a tour of the census homepage. And I'm going to actually start right up here in this corner, our population clock. A lot of people think this is a pretty nifty thing that we have here. And I'm going to open it up. And you'll see that you get uh, the population for both the US and we provide the world population. And we'll scroll down and you'll see some different uh, charts and, and graphs. We also provide some information, for example, the most populous states. We have got different tabs for counties and cities, um, highest density. One of the neat features that I've recently learned through this is for through our world population clock, we can click on this link and we'll come to our world pop clock. And if you scroll down, you see a map. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick for example, Brazil. 
And when I select that, it opens up and you get some information on the country. So you get a zoomed in map. You can see here we've got some, some basic facts, some comparisons, and then some really interesting information on trade and some more information on population. So this is a pretty neat um, feature, whether you like statistics or perhaps you're in education and might be interested in using this as a tool for students. This is a, a neat drill down that we have with our population clock. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go back out here, to the census homepage. And I'm going to continue to come on down and show you some of the other things that we offer initially on our homepage. We always have different economic indicators. We typically always have these two options right here, which is help for survey participants. So if you want to learn information about a survey or perhaps you got a survey yourself, here's a link for you to learn that information. We usually always have a link to our quick facts tool where you can access local data. If you come on down, usually under the latest news, we'll have information about if we've put out a blog or perhaps if we've got a data release. So you can see here um, that we're getting ready to embargo some of our detailed population estimates. And then also on May 23rd, we had some other, another population estimates release. And so here we've got some information on some of the fastest growing cities. About a year or so ago, we started this America Count, Stories Behind the Numbers, and these are interesting. Uh, you know, we put out a lot of statistics at the Bureau. We have over 130 ongoing surveys, so we're always putting out different statistics. And the America Count is a nice way to bridge the gap between the data and the real world use of our data. So sometimes we have articles that are written by subject matter experts who have worked on the program and the data, and they provide examples of how people are using it in a state, a government, maybe it's a nonprofit. And then sometimes we also have stories that are written by some of our partners to tell us how they use our data. So if you're interested in kind of that, that connection, this is a good uh, place to go to look at some of those stories. We usually offer here um, some of our popular visualizations. I will show you where you can find more of those as we do our tutorial on the website. But we put out some really neat, interesting uh, graphics, whether we're doing a data release or sometimes we just do whimsical things. Um, you know, For example, every day is a national something day. So sometimes we just do some fun, whimsical ones for that. We also have a link to popular publications. We've got several here. One that I would like to point out to you, for those of you that may be interested in 2020 or are going to be part of a complete count committee, this is a good document for reference. It talks about all the different operations that we have for the census and at a, you know, at a high level and also gives some of those timelines of when those operations take place. So this is a really nice resource tool. As we continue to come down, you'll see we get some information on events and what is going on. And I'm going to click on the full calendar here. I think this is one thing, if you do go to the census homepage, that often gets overlooked. People sometimes don't make it all the way down to the bottom of our page. And what you find here is a calendar of a lot of the events that are going on. If you scroll down, you'll see it's color-coded by dot. Uh, in terms of the category for what might be happening. So for example, today the yellow um, is showing these are several events where there's going to be census staff. Uh, we also have a release, the blue, a quarterly financial report for retail trade. And then we also have one of the webinars that is being conducted today. As you can see, ours is not up here. Uh, we have I think a little bit of challenge with some of the real estate here, but we also try and put um, at least one or several of the webinars that are being conducted on a particular day. So this can be a really nice uh, resource and one-stop shop to find out um, what's going on and where we are and the different data releases. We're gonna come back up here to the census homepage 
and I'm going to come under information four. And we're going to start off with the media and the newsroom. Now, there are several things that I like from this newsroom page. I'm going to show you just a couple today, but I'll encourage you to come back and explore some of the other ones that we have. First, I'm going to start off and I'm going to show you our facts for features. So one of the things that I, I think is neat about the facts for features is, you know, typically we may honor, um, you know, a particular group or there might be a, a particular event that we'll hire or highlight on a particular month. So for example, we've got uh, this month, the Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And if you click on here, what's nice is we give you some background about how this came to be, um, why we have um, this month. And then we also have some statistics as well. So you can see here, um, you know, 22.0 million, the estimated number of Asian alone or in combination. Well, if you click on, or put your mouse over that 20.2.2 million, down in the lower left-hand part of the screen, you should see, you'll see it says factfinder.census.gov. So if you click on this link, it will bring you to Fact Finder to this particular table. And it's also nice because we give you the vintage of the data for, for which this was calculated. So if you continue to come on down, you'll see that we have some other statistics as well. And we also provide the different vintages. We'll just scroll on down a minute so you can just get an idea. So this is really nice. Um, a real world, real world example I have of this is I was um, last October doing a training session and I showed this to our group and November happened to be Veterans, Veterans Month and we had one of the, since I had showed this to the group, they went ahead and were able to pull some talking points and data for somebody that was going to be giving a speech. So one of the ladies in the training happened to be from the, the communications area at the university. And so she was able to use this document to go ahead and pull some talking points for um, one of the, the president or um, one of the executives at the university. We also have here, I'll just point out, press releases. So here's a good place to come to get information on press releases. Also, we'll put together press kits. So for example, when we have our big American communities uh, releases, American Community Survey releases, We'll put together a press kit of information. Uh, it'll also provide, if we did a webinar, links to that. So there's some good information you can find in here. We have our stats for stories. That is similar to our facts for features where we might highlight a particular subject. We'll write about it and then provide you with some backup tables and data. These can also be timely. Um, another example I had is I, was, I received a question from a realty group they wanted some information on housing. And I happened to, when I was helping search for them, find that we had just recently done a stat for stories for them. And so it was great to share that with them because it actually provided some links and uh, tables to data that they could use for their work. The last thing I'm gonna show you at here under the newsroom is our tip sheets. And one of the things that I really like about the tip sheets is it's another one-stop shop to get a lot of good information about the Bureau. We put these out every two weeks. So here's the latest one that we've put out. We'll give you information on our product calendar. Uh, if we have something we wanna share from one of our biggest surveys, the American Community Survey, anything that we might wanna share for our demographic survey, you can come down here, we've got a heading for economics, any information that we might like to share with you for this. For example, the 2016 statistics of US businesses table. We just talked about that facts for features. Here's a couple that they're highlighting. We'll be putting out one for the 4th of July, also one for the anniversary of Americans with disabilities. I mentioned that stats for stories, here's a list. Um, which is nice that will give you some of the recent stats for stories that we've put out. And also the link that you'll see there to go to reference those. If we have something that we've done for radio, we might highlight that. 
We're also getting down to our releases section. So May 23rd, we had some of our sub-county population estimates. For economic, for some news, uh, we had a webinar for them. And then on the home page, I showed you where those America count stories were. So we've also got a section for that. Again, a little bit more for stats, for stories, for links, and new blogs that we put out. Surveys, are we conducting a survey in your area? Tools, we'll typically list some of our tools, or if we have some new tools, we'll mention those. And then also another great place to learn about training opportunities. We'll typically list within that two week period what will be coming up, or the next two week period what will be coming up. So as you can see, the one that you're participating in today has made this list. So this is one of the things, this is a, one of my favorite, I think, tools that a lot of people don't know about that I love. And every time it puts it out, I know I look at it every week to see what's going on. It helps helps keep me informed about what's going on at the Bureau. So therefore, then I can inform you all as, as my customers. Next, we're going to go ahead and also, while we're under Information 4, I'm going to jump down here to Educators and Students. We have a program at the Bureau that's called Statistics in Schools. If any of you might be familiar with this from 2010, it used to be called Census in Schools. And we wanted to make it a more evergreen program, so we changed the name to Statistics in Schools. This is a site where you can get lessons plans that were created for teachers by teachers. So if, if we've got any educators on the line, or even if you're a parent, and this is something that you might like to do with your child or a niece or a nephew or a grandchild, this is a nice place that you can come. So we'll scroll down here and we highlight some of our classroom resources. We have a variety of different topics for which we put the lessons out. We've got math, history, English, geography, sociology. We've got some, some fun little warm act activities. You can see we've got something for National Pet Day, Toy Makers by State, that's a, that's a neat one. That's one of my favorite ones. And then we also put out some fun facts for the children, just like we do for the adults. And if you come back up here to the top, under the activities, we have it broken down by category. We also have it broken down by the different grade levels. And we have K through 12. We have a resources tab. So we've got some videos, we've got some maps and games. It talks about some of the standards, so if you're interested in the standards to which we create these lesson plans for, you'll have that. And then about is also really good. Um, we've got some information about SIS in the schools, 101 for students, um, and there is an option there for contacting. In terms, if you're interested um, of what's going on for the 2020 census, we are currently working on different activities and plans for the 2020 census. So as we, those become available, we'll probably make some kind of announcement, which is nice if you sign up for this subscription, because you'll, you'll get that. And then we'll end up going ahead and we'll put those lesson plans and those documents on our website to share. So that'll be forthcoming. So I know this button wasn't working earlier when I tried to go census.gov, so I'm going to have to just go ahead and type in census.gov to get us back to the home page. The next section that I'd like to share with you is under our surveys and programs tab. So as you can see, we've got a lot of good information here, but I'm going to come over to our American Community Survey. And one of the things that I discovered um, a couple months ago when David and I were preparing for another one of our webinars was some interesting things buried under our Why Do You Ask? So right here on our, our ACS page, we've got our why do, why do I Ask? I will mention real quick that this is, if you are using our American Community Survey, this page is a great one-stop shop to get all sorts of information. We'll talk about the latest things that are going on, if you need information about our technical documentation, the methodology, this is all right here for you as a resource. So we're going to go ahead and go into why you ask each question. 
And I knew that this existed, that we did have a section on the different questions and why we ask. So we have a fact sheet here um, for all the person-related questions. We also have a fact sheet for the housing questions. And then you can see that we, type, we break it up by category and some of the questions that fall under there. So I'm gonna scroll on down here to our health insurance coverage. And what's nice when you get here is it talks a little bit about why do we ask the question? Um, we address privacy because of course at, at utmost we protect everything that we collect. Right here we have question as it appears on the form. So if you're interested in that, this is neat. It'll show you how to look at that question. Results from the question, we're gonna come back to this in a minute. But we have, uh, how does it help communities? So we talk a little bit, it provides assistance to children, for veterans, care of American Indians. If we've done some kind of neat visualization, we might also have that with it. And then down here, we also have a fact, a neat fact sheet as well. But what I really wanna show you that I think is a cool feature that um, this is a feature that I discovered a few months ago, buried in here, is that if you click on results, we actually put in some links to some different data tables. And these hot links will bring you to American, or to the American Fact Finder tool. And we can come down here and we can drill down. And I'm gonna come to Oregon, the state where I live, and I'm gonna say get data. And you'll see, we get some tables populated, some of the popular health tables. And then, I think this is pretty cool, you can even drill down a little bit further. So I'm gonna go ahead and select county. And then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna select Marion County and say get data. So this is really nice, we've been able to drill down. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna pick one of these tables so I can actually show you. We're gonna click this. And it's gonna open into our American Fact Finder tool. So for some of you that already use this tool, this should look familiar to you. And so this is great. We get a table of data. So this particular table where it's pulling from is our data profile table, our selected economic characteristics. I really love our data profile tables. This is one of my favorite tools that we have um, within American Fact Finder, one of the, the products that we really that I really love because it provides a highlight and snapshot of a lot of data in one place. So you can see we've got Oregon and Mar Marion County. So we are interested in the health, but as we scroll down, you'll see we get some really other great data. We get employment, commuting to work, occupation, industry, class of worker, income. And now we're gonna come down to health insurance because that was what we linked into to get this table. So we saw what I selected, here's that 9.9%, so no health insurance coverage. So you can see we get it for both a number and a percent. And then if you scroll on down, we also have some information on poverty level. So I thought this is a, a pretty neat feature, a one way that you can go in and get some data on a particular topic without having to navigate through Fact Finder itself. So there's one other thing that I wanna show you that I like. Through our American Community Survey website. So we're gonna go back. Okay, and I'm gonna come under here and under data, I'm going to go to data, tables, and tools. And the tool that I'm gonna show you here that I really like is our, called our narrative profiles. And they have been, for some of you, if you've already used the narrative profiles, they are in the process, you'll see it says beta, so they are in the process of, of upgrading this site. But if you come down here, um, what you'll see is, what you can do is put in a geography, and then we put together, as it says, a short analytic report 
that's based on 15 different topic areas. And I think this is really nice if you're somebody that's maybe working on a grant or you're doing some kind of report or analysis or you're working on a PowerPoint. This is a chance for you to go ahead and put in your geography and then we do some of that work for you. And you can copy and paste. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in county and I go ahead and I'm gonna actually put in New Jersey, where David's from, and I'm going to select Essex. And we're going to say Get Narrative Profile. And then it's going to go ahead and compute, and then what we're going to get is we're going to go ahead and get this report. So it's based on, as you can see, the 2013 to 2017 ACS five-year data. And as we go ahead and go down as it's populating the data, you'll see we get information on households and families. We also will get um, a table. Sometimes you do get a, a pie chart or a bar graph, depending on what's coming up. It looks like because it is in beta today, some of the charts may not be populating. But you'll see we've got a chart here nativity and foreign born, language, geographic mobility, education, disability, employment, industry, occupation, commuting to work. So there's a lot of good categories here and you're welcome to copy and paste any of this information into your report or your slides. All of our data and everything that we offer on the website is free. We just ask that when you do use our information that you source us. So it looks like, yeah, because it's in, in beta today, um, we're not getting one of the charts. But hopefully if you come back in and explore this tool, if you like it further, then you'll, you'll see that. But you're, again, you're welcome to copy and paste and go through this. And so this is a really nice summary of a lot of good information. I'm going to show you one other thing. And I forgot to mention this earlier. So you may notice um, as we move from screen to screen, some of the look and feel might be a little bit different. We are in the process of upgrading our website. So some areas have some of that new look and feel and others may have some of that older look and feel. I'm gonna to come to the library. And then I wanna show you the last thing that I'm going to show you before I we do some questions and I turn it over to David is our infographics and visualizations. And again, you might have, get another pop-up opportunity if you'd like to subscribe. So here, these are pretty cool. I think we do some, some really neat visualizations. Sometimes we'll do some if we have a data release. Sometimes, um, you know, if it's a National Donut Day or a Happy Mother's Day, we'll, we'll have something related to that. Um, so I'm gonna show you just for example, I'm gonna come here to this housing unit percent change. And this is, as you can see, a recent one that has come up. I think we put this together based on some of our uh, pop estimate data that had come out on May 23rd. So we have this. And then what's really nice is we've got, if you want to embed the graphic, we provide you with that link. We also we also provide you with some other information. If you wanna download or print this graphic, we've got links to that. So these are really nice. These are just an example. So this is something where, for example, um, if you wanted to use it in a presentation or report, you're welcome to do that. And you'll see as we go back that we have a variety of them. You see, we put one out for Mother's Day. So we've got a lot of different ones here. And if you go across the top, we've got tabs by different years. So you can go back and see some of the older vintages that we have. So these are some of, uh, some of the data gems that I think are pretty neat. Uh, hopefully some of you all think they're pretty neat and you'll come back and visit those, these at another time. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and we can open up the line, Fran. And then we'll go ahead and um, after that, David will show you some of his favorite gems. Yeah, and Heidi, before we go on, I, I have a chat question from somebody. Okay. 
Can I read that to you? So it's, it's back in the narratives. I think I know the answer. But uh, the question is, she selected place, and it gives her a whole list of places within the state, and it's not in alphabetical order. Um, and so she's sort of wondering what's, what's going on. It's probably it's because um, I think it's still in beta. David and I noticed beta. that. Yeah, David and I noticed that yesterday as well when we were um, doing the dry run. And I believe it's because it's still in beta. Typically in the old version, because I have used the place level, it has been alphabetical. So uh, just bear, uh, bear with us. Um, I think it's because it's still in beta. It's, it okay. Be so Heidi, right this is, I think this is a, a, a point counterpoint right now because I have a different theory and I've sure, noticed it in American Fact Finder. And that theory is that the places for the state are all in there, but they're there by county. So for example, I'm in New Jersey. All the places that are within Atlanta County are listed first. And then the next county, I think, which is Bergen County, they're, they're listed alphabetically places within those counties. So it could be it could be the beta or it could be what I noticed in American Fact Finder, I think. Okay? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the question. Mm -hmm. And if you'd like to ask a question over the telephone, please press star then one and record your name. Your name is needed to introduce your question. Our first question now is from Michael Bartis. Sir, your line is open. Uh, I was wondering, is there a way to find granular data on um, uh, voting districts in cities as opposed to zip codes? Because a lot of times the zip codes do not match up, you know, with the voting districts. Is there some sort of data at the census site on that? Yes, we do have some, some voting district data. Um, Michael, maybe what you can do is at the end, you can email David and I okay. your, your particular question, and we can work with you some offline for your particular need. Thank you. I have no further questions over the telephone lines. Okay, thank you. So you'll have a couple more opportunities to answer questions. So let me go ahead and we'll go ahead and turn it over to David. David will be showing you his screen in a minute. How's my screen? I need, you need full screen? Is that good? Yep, there we go. Full screen. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and start. Um, I know there might be a couple lingering chat questions. Maybe we can get to them at the end. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm sort of going to do a little bit of the same thing that Heidi did. I'm starting at the right, going through a few of these tabs and just showing you um, some of my favorite things. So one of them is in the uh, section that says about us. Um, I like to just um, tell you that there's this thing right here. People are always asking about jobs. So here we have um, field jobs by state. If you came here and click on it. Um, probably you're going to go down here and you need to actually see these offices here. So for example, you will notice that sometimes what we do is the jobs are actually posted um, at the, the field office. Okay, so we have New York, covers New England, New York State, um, New Jersey, and Puerto Rico. And we could come right here and we can look up jobs by state. Uh, when we do that, I, I want to warn you, sometimes it's a, a mix and match kind of thing. So for example, I may be looking for jobs in New Jersey and I, I will do that. I'll click on that and let's see what we have. Here it is, field representatives and we have some jobs right here. And then we also have some decennial jobs a little bit further along if you wanted to look there. Um, sometimes what I tell people is, let me just see if I can go back. Not always easy to do. Oops. Sometimes you have to go right to the state that the office is in. So New York State over here on the left. And when I come there, sometimes the jobs that are even for New England or um, New Jersey will be in there even just because the office is in New York. 
So you may, um, you may want to do that and look and see what's going on. Sometimes the jobs are posted here and they are not posted on the national um, website. So something to keep in mind, these are a mixture of current survey jobs. So we don't just do that 10 year count. We actually have sort of these semi-permanent jobs that are part-time. Uh, you can work on surveys um, when you have free time. You don't have to quit the job you have. You could do this on your own if you're a people person. Um, and that's through our regional office. And then we have these decennial jobs that are going on, which are probably full-time jobs, but will only last one or two years. So something just to keep in mind, um, I will go back home. And once again, about us, and I wanted to come over here to what we call staff directory. So if there was ever somebody you were looking for, you knew they worked at the Census Bureau, maybe you knew the last name, um, you could put the name in like this. I'm probably the only one. And then you can find what division I work in, my email, and you can also find my phone number right there. So that is another thing you can do um, through our website. Okay, and that was under About Us, and it was under Staff Directory. And then another thing that I kind of like in this tab is this little R History um, tab that people don't, don't know about too readily. And we have a whole history department. And you can come in here and every day or every couple days they're putting something new up here, what has um, transpired previously. And you can get all sorts of information. You get information about the, the agency right here, meaning uh, the Census Bureau. So we have some information there and it goes on and on. I like to um, point people right here to genealogy. So some people are, are looking for genealogy information from the Census Bureau. When you click on this, uh, and that genealogy information is only for the 10-year the, uh, census that we do every 10 years. We release it after 72 years. Uh, we actually release it to the National Archives. And so the, the link is here um, from our website going to the National Archives. Um, I also like to show you, if I can find it here, da, 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 da. Okay, here it is under through the decades. You, there's an index of questions that we've asked on the 20 or on the 10 year censuses. So here we have the censuses over here. If I clicked on the year 2000, it shows you the question very quickly that we asked in the 2000 census. So there were some, this is the long form. Okay, over here we are. And only the first 10 questions would have been the short form. And then for example, 2010, we only asked 10 questions, okay? Because we have now separated that out to the American Community Survey. Uh, we no longer have the, the longer questions. Just something for you to think about, something for you to look at. If you're interested in that, I will go back to Census Home. And the next thing I want to show you is under surveys and programs. I'm going to show you there is actually information about the 2020 census over here. A couple of things. Um, we have some uh, pamphlets and brochures that Heidi mentioned before. Just a couple other things that we have going right here con concerning the 2020 census. Um, you can become a partner over here on the left, and you can um, start a complete count committee if you contact us. And I believe we have our information somewhere here. Uh, here, here it is down here. There's an email. We will probably we have so many partnership uh, specialists right now. I'm sure they would want to contact you and give you information about doing a, a complete count committee for your town or county or or church group or what have you. So you can certainly do that. That information is here. Um, I, I, once again, jobs, 2020 census jobs, it's over here. A little bit of a different mechanism than what I showed you before. You can come right here. This is a uh, applicant bank. You click here, apply now, first time applicants, they come here. And you're going to fill this up, create yourself sort of an account it mails you um, a passcode and to your email and everything. And then you go back in and you log in and then you fill in your information. And when we need census takers, um, 
and even for local census offices that were opening, we will um, go through that data bank and start calling people and start interviewing people. So that is just a, an easy way to get your, your name into the pipeline if you would like to do something like that. So keep, keep that in mind. So once again, I was in the part that said surveys and programs right here. And one other thing is I, I do like to show this one, my favorite thing, small area income and poverty. I'm right here. So this is measuring the level of poverty around the United States. Um, but there is a pretty cool tool called the Stapy Interactive Tool. When you click on that and it loads, and you load it to full screen like that, we can now see um, poverty rates around the country. Okay. And I believe it is done by county. We can zoom in. I hold down my left mouse key and scroll around a little bit. I can zoom in a little bit more, see what's going on. It takes a minute or two to, to clear up the map, but it does, it does clear up eventually. There it is. So we can kind of see, we, we certainly know that uh, the more of something, the darker it is. But right over here on the left, there is a legend tool. And so you can see where people are, what percentage of people are um, under the poverty line. So here we have three, you know, three to 10%, whatever it is. So you can see that if you want to. And you can sort of scroll around and look at the country done by county. You can certainly come over here and change the map if you want to. If you're just thinking about children who um, are within that poverty rate, you can click right here. Looks like that defers to the um, state, however. Um, but anyway, another thing you can do, I just, I, I think this is kind of interesting. You can come here and do it by school district. Okay, and let's see if we can load. And so what happens is when you load, you just have to select a school district. It doesn't really matter which one. You hit OK. And it zooms in to that school district. Okay, but as you zoom out, it shows you all the school districts around the country. There it is, and I like. Let me zoom out one more time. And I really, I really just like to draw attention to how big the school districts are in the southeast. And when you get up here into the northeast, how, how we have these tiny little school districts. But in any case, this is a way to look at some of the statistics and information around the country. And you can sort of just go right in here and click on one of these school districts if you want to. And it just tells you, uh, oops, I zoomed in, sorry about that. But it tells you what the school district is and, and the percentage. And so I don't say this is the most perfect tool, but it's you know kind of a fun tool to get yourself an answer or a view of the whole country uh, if you need to do that. So let me go back. Okay, and then I'm just going to transition over here to explore data. Okay, so that is another tab that we have here. And I do like to point this out because we, we are part of this Census Academy. You can come here, and this is where you can find out about web to, uh, webinars if you want to, upcoming webinars right here. And by the way, I, if we didn't say this before, today's webinar is being recorded. So this is this week, if you are going to really want to um, enroll for other webinars. I, uh, I would urge you to do it the week before, at least, the webinar, because the week of a webinar, we do an email blast, and people just start um, registering for the webinars left and right. And sometimes we, we've capped those webinars, as we did for the webinar today, and not everybody can get in. So you might, you know, you want to be about a week ahead of time. You want to look ahead. The webinar series we're doing now is just going until the end of June, and then there won't be as much. For example, let's look at July. It is all, oops, it didn't seem to even come up for July, but there won't be very many. Um, actually, there may not be any. There's just a couple in July. There's one. There's one in August. And so those are, you know, right now we have a lot of webinars going on every day. Um, so just, just something to keep in mind. So I'm going back 
the Sunset Academy. You can also come up here. We have some courses you can take if you want to. They're, they're recorded right here online. And we also, I have to keep uh, scrolling back, sorry. Here it is, Census Academy. Uh, we also have these data gems, which are actually YouTube videos, okay? And they're meant to, to just be little helpful aids, helping you um, get, get certain concepts if you need them. And so here they are right here. Um, so something just for you to look at, they are not meant to be perfectly um, beautiful videos. They are something on par with what my 16-year-old daughter would be looking at on YouTube. So just something to keep in mind. So here we are back up here. We were under Explore Data. I showed you um, Census Academy. And I just wanted to come here to Census Tools and Apps. And this is where we take most people when we come out and give one of our workshops, um, our presentations, we bring them through here and we look at the tools. And one of the main tools that we use is that American Fact Finder. Heidi showed that to you before. And this is a way that you can go in and you can start getting um, that rich data and, and advanced search. And somebody asked before about getting information by voting district. This is the place you would do it. Okay, so you go in here and we would be we would be happy to help you do this. Um, it, it, it takes a little bit of patience, but this is really where the deep data is. Okay, and you can do it both by um, chart sort of method or a list method, and you can do it by mapping method as well. And so we, we do help you do that. We will help you over the phone um, or even um, do a, a private webinar for your group if you need that. So these are other tools that are down here. And I'm looking at my time to see how much time we have, not a lot. I'm just going to show you really quickly. It doesn't always work. You have this thing called Census Flows Mapper, and you can launch it. And some, I, I'm going to tell you, some of these tools at Census Bureau, some of them have bad hair days, you know, where they don't, they don't quite work. But you can certainly come here. You can um, select a county. There it is now. And maybe we want to see the outbound there. And let's see if we can get that to go. Sometimes it's not going to go. I'll tell you what, I'll just take this one, Abbeville. And, oh, I, I'm, I have it blocked. But what it, what it will do, um, sometimes it's going to show you where people are transitioning from if they're moving out of your county and where they're going to. So, it's, it's really kind of good for you to see that sometimes things don't work for us either. So it, oh, here it comes. So I selected Abbeville County, which is down here in South Carolina. I can zoom in. And it's showing me where people, the inbound uh, counties, people from these surrounding counties, if they're moving, moving there, not working there, but moving into this county where they are coming from. If they're moving out of the county, I can click over here outbound. Let's see if something happens. Kind of a new, unique thing. We're always a few years behind getting this data up there. Okay, and so here we go, migration uh, out of the county, and this is kind of what it looks like. So that is another tool that we have up there, something for you to use. Uh, you might be interested in that. So finally, let me go back. You can browse by topic. You can come over here. So I'm, I'm jumping from Explore Data now to, to the left to browse by topic. So you can come down here and you can look for different topics if you want to. You have this over here. Um, but I'll just show you geography really quick. Some people are interested in that. And you can come down here and you can start looking up uh, extra information um, if you if you needed that information. One last thing I'll show you really quickly if you're looking for information, um, I'm going to just um, right up here, I am using um, Chrome, so this only works in Chrome and, or it works on Google, but you can come up here and if you're looking for something, let's say census.gov and you give it a space and you type the word site, 
hole in space, you can put something in. For example, I had SAIP or I can put ACS. It enter and it brings me to the American Community Survey or ACS site within our site. Okay, you can do this for any site. If you're looking up like the University of Pennsylvania and you're looking up um, information about sociology, you could just put universe, whatever their site is and site um, dot dot and then sociology. I'll just show you one other thing. I'll do it again. Census Bureau site, if I needed to get to the academy, I can put in the word academy and it'll find me um, different variations on the theme, but here it is right here. So that is another thing you can do. You can just use a site search as long as you are within Google or you are within Chrome. So uh, that, that done, Heidi, are there any questions for me? Anybody, are there any questions? No, we had uh, one question uh, in the chat about uh, possibly if we had time navigating to the narrative profile, but I sent a chat note to everybody to let you know that we will be adding to the deck a couple slides that have some of the references that we pointed to today. So for example, you know, for information about that tab, I went to SIS in the newsroom. So we will put together um, kind of a guide or tutorial about some of the places that we went today. So don't feel like if you were trying to rush to, to jot everything down um, and you missed something that you did, because we'll go ahead and provide that to you. And Fran, we'll go ahead and actually, uh, Fran, we'll, we can take a couple questions. Presently none in queue, but as a reminder, please press star then one and record your name. If you do have a question over the phone lines, one moment. And David, go ahead and transfer to me yeah. and then. And we'll go ahead. So at this point, this at this time, this ends some of the online demo. And what we'll do is we'll just wrap up with um, a few parting words and information that we want to share with you. Do you have time for one question on the phone? Okay. I'm Carlson Jackson. Ma'am, your line is open. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, we have just formed a consortium for workforce development in New Jersey covering eight counties in the north. And one of the things that every single, uh, there are 900 businesses in it. And everybody has a different census profile. In other words, how they work with the census. Are we able to uh, have our 75 leaders come together in a session with you to get some guidance? Because we are trying to build a master plan for workforce development. How, how would we do that? How would you recommend that we do that working with the census? David, um, since it's what we can do is you'll yeah. have our contact information at the end. Yes. And David yes. is your contact for New Jersey. He can work with you offline. That would be wonderful, and thank you very much. Thanks. And I have one more on the phone lines. Mary Gray. Mary Gray, your line is open. You may ask your question. Okay. My uh, question has to do where David was um, talking about... Um, uh, getting the jobs. Uh, I'm currently a student and um, I'm retired and I worked for the census in 2010. So um, I called Riverside and she told me where to go and that I can apply for five different jobs. And so I was going through this learning how your website works. Um, when you log in there, um, David just showed it. It says um, first time applicant when you're going to fill out your app and then it says returning. I hit returning but I didn't complete it. Am I already in there? Because I worked for you in 2010 but yeah, I just I think you canvassed, sort of I canvassed the neighborhood. It was all paper. <laughs> I was an emulator. Yeah, yeah. So you, you would not already be in that system. It's, it, they're going to start that okay. system all over again. Okay, so I just put all my current information and then do my pass, or they're going to send me a password and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. did they yeah. send it to you, the password? No, I didn't complete it. 
I kind of looked at it and then I, you know, had some questions and so I kind of logged out and uh, so I'm going to log in here in the next week, fill out the application and look at the different jobs. Um, she said that they're going to be hiring in my area in August. I yes, live in they'll California. Be, they'll be so. doing canvassing for not, they'll be counting housing units in August. So that'll be a bit of a smaller operation, but it might be a little bit more fun because you don't really have to talk to very many people. You're just mapping uh, addresses and things of the sort. Um, I don't think they'll be hiring as many people, but still they'll be hiring people all around the country. And yes, okay. if you participated in 2010, we went to an automated system. So we're less paper this time. So you'll, anybody that's on the phone that is interested, uh, you'll need to apply to that new system. And what is that? What is that position called? Uh, you know, like I don't know what that would be. Is that a numerator or a canvasser, maybe? Or a census taker? Or a census yeah, taker, sure. maybe? Okay. Yeah, we don't know. Well, she said I could apply for five at one time with the one application. So. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> figure out which one it is, you know, because I just wanted to start part-time, you know, because I'm in school and um, yeah. mm -hmm. to supplement my income and stuff. So, all right. Yeah, it's a great opportunity. So I really enjoyed it before. So, thank thank you. you. So, okay. Fran, I'm going to go ahead. If there's any questions, we'll hold them for a minute so I can just go ahead and thank you. Last few, some of the last bits of information that we want to share. So I wanted to mention... Um, that we, David mentioned American Fact Finder. I went ahead and through one of the things that I showed you, I mentioned that tool. And um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that we are migrating away from American Fact Finder to a new tool called data.census.gov. So American Fact Finder will be around, um, they're telling us, for at least a year or so, but effective um, with the American Community Survey release that we'll have in September as well as some of the economic data that will be released because we just did an economic census last year where we collected that data. So we'll be producing statistics for that and that will be starting to be released in September as well. So starting with those two releases, they will be um, output only in data.census.gov. They will not be in AFS. So uh, we'll encourage you to keep an eye on the webinars list uh, and encourage you that if you are interested in learning about this tool to keep an eye on the different webinars. Um, that's another reason to sign up for that subscription. I know I've kind of been mentioning that, but that will also keep you in the loop of what's going on and when we'll have other webinars. But this is going to be our, our one-stop shop for data. Um, that's not to say some of the other tools that you might use like Quick Facts or Census Business Builder, those will still be around. Um, we don't know specifically if some of those tools will eventually get sunsetted, but for right now you can plan on them sticking around and it's just AFS, AFS that we will um, no longer continue to put new data output through. David mentioned um, here's our Census Academy. So uh, David had mentioned that we'll have, right now we're in a current webinar series where it goes through June, and that's just the webinar series that's sponsored from our group. So the group that David and I work for, a number of us were working on these national webinar series. You did see when David looked at July and August, there were some links to other ones. So we do also put links if some of our, um, our sister divisions are also doing webinars, we will advertise those for them as well on our site. So you can keep an eye out for that. But I know um, some of the ones that are coming up, the economic area will continue to have some webinars throughout the summer and into the fall. We are everywhere on social media. So if you don't follow us, you might like to follow us. And again, I mentioned those um, subscriptions. Here's also a link for you if you want to sign up um, if you don't get that pop-up box. But if you don't, follow us, please think about following us on some of social media because we'll keep you up to date with some of the updates and things that are going on around the Bureau. You'll have the contact information for David and I. Um, again, I cover mostly the Pacific Northwest uh, and David is in um, covers New Jersey and some New York. And then we also have our general box. 
So if you'd like to know who your local PBS is, if you're interested in getting some training or have some questions, please feel free to call our our line, our Ask Data line, or our email box, and they will put you in touch with your local data dissemination specialist. Also feel free, if you can't get a hold of David and I, um, you can also send questions and emails to that general box as well. We'd really love to know what you thought of our session today. Was it helpful? Um, is there something that we could improve on? Is there something that you want to learn about in the future? Uh, of, you can look at our webinar list, see what we have, see if there's something else you'd like to learn. So please provide your feedback to us. We'd love to know um, if this was helpful to you today and if there are other things that you would like to see. And with that, uh, Fran, we'll go ahead and uh, open up the lines. Thank you very much. We do have one more question right now. One moment. Let's see. And David, also, if there's anything in chat. Okay, I have one on the phone. D. Runette, your line is open, sir. Thanks. I have actually a couple of questions. Uh, one is, um, what uh, data is available and how can one easily find it in terms of congressional district level data? Um, and related to that is the second question uh, concerning uh, public involvement, uh, trying to stop gerrymandering after the 2020 census. Is Are there any plans for the Census Bureau to uh, make available uh, relevant data that individu individuals in the various states can uh, get access to and use to uh, try and minimize the amount of uh, gerrymandering that uh, the politicians engage in? Well, I would say for your, um, your question about um, what you'd like to know, um, I think it would be easier probably if you shoot, um, you can shoot a note to David and I about okay. what you're looking for the congressional and then one of us can follow up with you. We do have that some of that data right now through our American Fact Finder tool that you can access okay. and drill down. Um, in terms of the, the gerrymandering, I can't really speak to that. I mean, I can tell you that based on um, we're required by law after the census to put together what's called a public law file where we have um, accounts from by population for the states with some other characteristics and we have to turn those over to the states by March 31st of 2021 because it's a year after we conduct the census. So states will have that information um, we're you know, working towards uh, reapportionment, but I can't speak too much. And, and that data will eventually be released to the public as well. The timeline, I'm not sure to which we end up turning that data over onto our website. Um, but those are the few things, at least, that I can speak to that I, I know about um, with regards to your question. I don't know if you have anything to add, David. Um. Heidi, for the creative reapportionment, I think every state um, uses its own kind of system. So I'm, I, you know, there's not one system that's from state to state. I, I just want to say that. So right. um, I, I'm not really sure how you can participate or so you have to know. We don't know how every state does it. Um, so that I just want to say that the, the data that you're talking about, I believe, go, has to go out before the end of 2020. Um, it has yeah, so we give the, the count to the president by the end of 2020, and then that public law data go, that goes to the states for the apportionment yeah. that has to be delivered to them by April 1st the following year. So it's March 31st of 2021. Yeah, yeah. And then the other thing, Heidi, that, that uh, they're certainly welcome to contact us about that. But I think the to get the information about Congressional District, um, don't we have a website, My Congressional District? Is that what that's yes, called? Yes, or yeah, yep, yeah, we can, and we can send that. If you send your question to us, then we can send you probably the easiest tool to use. Yeah, Great. you just, you just put, put it in there, and it gives you all sorts of data um, for the for the Congressional District as a whole, not, for, not that you can analyze what's going on in different parts of the Congressional District, but you, you get a whole number for the Congressional District. Yeah, that's it for me. 
Thank you. At this time, I have no further questions on the. T oh, I have one more now. Mary Gray, your line is open again. Um, can you just take the um, PowerPoint back to where it has yours and David's numbers in your oh, email? And I we'll wasn't able to good. get it fast enough. Yeah, and we'll be able to. Uh, we'll be sending this to you within the next day as well. So we'll, oh, we'll add okay. a, a couple slides that give you some of the pointers uh, to some of the things that we went through so that if you felt like you were scrambling to write them down, you'll have that. And then um, within the next day or so, once David and I just add these additional slides, then we will go ahead and get the decks out, everybody that joined us today. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. But, but it, I, I just want to say, if you have a uh, an iPhone handy, this is the moment when you're supposed to haul it out and take a picture of the screen. Mm -hmm. Um, have an iPhone. I had one, but I went to a simpler phone because I do so okay, much all right. work on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I need to simplify this. So. Thank you. Fran, other questions on the phone? No, I have no further questions. So I'll turn it back to you for any closing remarks. Thank you. David, anything from chat? Uh, anything? No, I, I think you just got a few compliments that people said this is exactly what they needed. So I think you're good. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We know everybody is busy, so we appreciate you taking time out of your day to join David and I. And again, look out for other future webinars. And um, again, please provide us some feedback with anything um, that David and I can approve for a session today or other things that you might look to be getting uh, training on in the future. And again, thank you so much, and we appreciate it. And we'll see you again. As the conference is concluded, please go ahead and disconnect. Again, thank you for your participation. Please disconnect. Enjoy the rest of your day.